All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm here with Lindsay Johnson, the Radical Connector, and we are here at Love Child in Toronto. Uh, searched around a little bit and tried to find a cool spot to shoot. Um, very incredibly hot, sweltering day here in Toronto, uh, but we are happy to sit down and bring some video content to you guys. Uh, and today we are going to be doing the five tips for networking. And uh, we're going to let Lindsay tell you guys all about her background with networking and uh, all of the success that she's had there. And then we're going to uh, bring all of that success, all of that experience, and all of that knowledge. We're going to package it up and we are going to deliver it to you guys. So, nice. Lindsay, please go ahead. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, it is sweltering in Toronto. I just flew in from Vancouver and apparently it's the beginning of a heat wave. In Toronto? Yes. I haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I am dying. Um, yes, so my name is Lindsay Johnson. My company, of course, is called The Radical Connector. And I love to network. My entire company has been built on networking. In fact, a lot of people don't know, before I was The Radical Connector, my company was called The Networking Boutique. So I actually was a networking company. Oh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah. And then I actually uh, rebranded and changed that because uh, I wanted to expand, expand what I do to include what I do now, which is business consultation. So I, uh, I'm a strategic business development person and I help first time entrepreneurs understand how business works and how their business works and how to get it off the ground. Awesome, yeah. So like get, um, bringing some business coaching and stuff like that as well to the, to the yeah. networking aspect. There, well, yeah, there's coaching, but it, it's it's there is coaching because that's inherently mm -hmm. who I am as a person, mm -hmm. but it's really about uh, business skills and learning how to build. So what is my business model? What are yeah, my revenue absolutely. streams? You know, what what are my rates? Who's my target market? Like understanding mm -hmm, these things, mm -hmm. getting, teaching people how to do sales, like having, I do, I do attraction-based sales strategies. Awesome, awesome. So it's more about how do I actually build a business? For sure. Um, and and then the coaching course comes in. Yeah, it's good to definitely want to bring some of uh, those structural things to it. A lot of people who are entrepreneurs, they already have the uh, you know the mindset and the attitude that they need uh, when it comes to getting the structures in place yeah. and getting those practices and everything solidified, that's where it can be a bit tougher for some people, so that's, that's what, awesome. That's what I say, I say I work with people who are brilliant, creative and driven, but secretly yeah. have no idea what they're doing. Okay, okay. <laughs> so let's let's uh, zero in quick yes. here on, uh, on networking. Yes. So, um, why is like networking so important to you and uh, why do you why are you so passionate about networking? So networking is for me truly the lifeblood of existence. Uh, I moved around a lot as a, as a kid. My parents were moving every couple of years so I was constantly having to remake new friends because we were moving to completely different cities, right? And so it, I learned very early on the importance of being able to, to connect with strangers and getting comfortable with talking to strangers, awesome. basically. Awesome. And, and I see, you know, we live in a time right now where the, the levels of isolation and loneliness are at an all-time high. And it is, it is killing us. I mean, there's lots of studies now that talk about how loneliness and isolation is, is, is as bad as smoking a, p a pack of cigarettes a day. Um, it is really harmful to our, our mental health, our physical health. And so, you know, networking doesn't have to be this gross, icky thing that, you know, that we think of this schmoozy, fake mm -hmm. thing. Networking is really just building relationships, whether we're meeting somebody new or we're nurturing relationships we already have. It's just about extending, extending out our connections and our community with people that we hopefully love to be around. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we want to get into some networking tips and wanna, we want to talk about uh, yeah why networking doesn't have to be something that you need to be afraid of. So uh, Lindsay has prepared five super awesome tips for us and we're going to get into those right now. Really? No, <laughs> I'm telling you. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'm really sweating here. Okay, so Lindsay's going to bring us into our first tip here, so please take it away. Okay, so if you have met me before and if you haven't, get ready. I am a super strategic person. Everything that I do and everything I teach is how to be strategic about it. So my very first point is that before you go to a networking event, be strategic. So think about why you are going to this event. Generally, we go to networking events or we network because it doesn't have to be a networking event. It's anything where there's people. But we're generally looking for potential clients, 
Uh, we could be looking for new friends, maybe we're new to, new to a city, uh, or it could be that we are looking for people to collaborate or partner with, or maybe even just peers. You know, again, if you're a first-time entrepreneur, you're probably not having a lot of entrepreneur friends yet in your, in your network. Mm -hmm. So it could be just to go meet other people like you. Awesome. So you kind of have these four reasons. So you really want to start to think with, think about why you're networking, who you're looking for, and then going to where they are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that that's a really important point because I think a, a lot of people when they're starting out in business, they kind of know that they're supposed to network yes. and they know that it's important and people keep telling them like, what networking are you doing and stuff like that. So they know that they have to go to the events, but then a lot of time it's like, why are you at that event? And I can give you a perfect uh, example, a personal example. Uh, this year I attended the Collision Conference, yeah. which was uh, in Toronto at Exhibition Place. And it was, uh, it, was, it was amazing, it was a really good experience, but I don't think that I made the, the full use of it yeah. because I didn't really have that much of an idea of who was gonna be there and what I really want to get out of it. I mean, I knew generally I want to, you know, make my network bigger, but yeah, if you have like very uh, clear goals in mind, if you want new customers, if you're looking for someone to invest in your business or yeah. something like that. It's, yeah. Yeah, Partners it's or investors. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and that's such a good point, Jared, because that's what happens is, is people, they think, oh, I have to network. So they go to everything and anything and mm -hmm. they burn out really quickly. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of their time. Right? They're not meeting the right people, and especially Absolutely. if they're forcing themselves to go to things they don't want to go to. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah. And that actually leads us to our second point. Okay, you awesome, dive into awesome. it? Yeah, let's get into All the right. second point. So the second point being that, that you, know, you want to go to where your people are, but you also want to go to where you have a good time and where you mm -hmm. feel like you fit yeah, in and belong. Very true, very true. Right? You don't have to go to things where you, you know, hate the community or you mm -hmm. feel like you're an outsider. Don't go to those things. Mm -hmm. If you hate networking events, don't go to mm -hmm. networking yeah. events. Because the same people that are at those networking events are also at the, the panel over here about you know women's uh, equality in Toronto, or they're over here at the art opening or at the launch of the new book. The same people in Toronto or wherever you are mm -hmm. are the same people in your city and they're all going to different things. So if you don't want to go to a networking event or there's a specific community you don't want to be a part of, don't go. Go find them somewhere else. Yeah. Make it something that you enjoy going to where you can really come and be yourself and mm -hmm. feel like you belong and feel energized to be there. Yeah, and it gets into that whole idea and we'll definitely talk about this more, but uh, being authentic, like you wanna make sure that you're going to places where you can really be yourself. And I was definitely uh, a victim of this when I started in business, I had this like, very um, maybe like old school kind of idea of what uh, an entrepreneur is and what an entrepreneur needs to look like and act like and be and uh, I went to events that sort of catered to that but at the end of the day like that's not really me like this is even in my sweaty shirt about as fancy as I ever dressed. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> We're both rocking the like Canadian tuxedo today, Canadian the jean tuxedo. on jean. <laughs> Very good, and uh, yeah, so I go to, I go to events where that type of thing uh, is a little bit more welcomed, and where you can just show up in your jeans and your on your skateboard, and uh, yeah, yeah, so. Uh, just all that to say that you know go to those events where you feel authentic and yeah just go to events you like like why yeah. why uh, you know entrepreneurship is supposed to be fun so yeah. you, if you're if you're going to events that you don't like uh, maybe ask yourself why why exactly and, and pay attention can I, can I add on that yeah of course please. you know really pay attention to what your body is telling you there there was an event that I used to go to it was a monthly event for for, for women um, and there were occasionally really great speakers, so I'd want to go to it. But I started to notice a trend. Every time I was on the subway heading down to this event, I would start to get really like anxious and, and nervous and almost feel like an aggressive in me. I felt really stressed out. And I was like, what's going on? And it's like, oh, I know what it is. While I enjoy the speakers, the community is not a community I feel like I belong. Mm -hmm. It's not in my world. I feel like I have to be someone else when I'm there. Mm -hmm. That you know, I can't be myself. Because same with you, I'm a, I'm a jeans and sneakers kind mm -hmm. of person, mm -hmm. and this is a very corporate suits and heels. She's and, the radical connector. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the like laid back radical, you know, and so and so it was that that same realization of, you know what, those speakers are other places, you know, why am I going here? Am I going to network? Am I going to, to listen to the speaker? And it is, it's paying attention to what's in the body. Yeah, and if absolutely. the body is freaking out, just don't go. Yeah, if you're, not, no. if you're not having a great time, you, you don't even have to stay there the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can leave. 
yeah, it's like it's your time as an entrepreneur, and you need to be uh, you need to be careful with it, and you need to be going to events that you like and events that yeah. are going to have a lot of value and are going to allow you to be authentic. So I really I really love that point. Yeah, yeah. and then we're gonna jump on authentic, and I'm gonna say the okay, next point let's go, let's is, go. is tip three. Tip three is to stop doing this whole fake it till you make it okay. thing. That is the worst. Um, that concept is really doing yourself a disservice because when you are faking mm -hmm. it until you make it, mm -hmm. you know that you're faking mm -hmm. it. Just because it rhymes, it's not necessarily true. <laughs> right? <Okay. Yeah. laughs> Okay, <laughs> so so yes, do not fake it because yeah, you are creating, you are creating, you know that you're faking it and what happens is you're, you're creating this invisible wall between you and people because you're not being authentic, mm -hmm. you're not being yourself, you're trying to play a role and be someone else. Also, when we fake it, we really close ourselves off to sort of connecting at a deeper level, asking for help, recognizing when we need help, recognizing someone who can help us because we have this facade on. And this is something I noticed really, really prevalent in Toronto when I moved here from Vancouver eight years ago, mm -hmm. I found it really frustrating to network because so many people have this, people. It, yeah, this mm -hmm. fake it till you make it inauthentic sort of facade and it was just like trying to break through that to get to the real person, right? Yeah. Which is by the way why I started my networking company because awesome. I was yeah. like, I'm going to teach this city how to network. Yeah, good. Well, teach them. They need to learn. Right, yeah. right. Well, I think I'm, I'm out here at these networking events. Right? Yeah, they need some lessons. I need some too. <laughs> we all, you know what? We all can approve. Listen, we all can approve. We we're can not all, we're, no one is perfect. We all have true. our days. But really just if you can if you can let go of that need to fake it and, and just be Absolutely. real which kind of feeds into point two as well which is if you're mm -hmm. going somewhere where you feel like you have to fake it that's a pretty good it's sign gonna, it's not yeah right it's gonna be tough yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely so what are your what are your thoughts on the fake it till you make it concept so I'm just kind of uh, thinking about yeah when again when I started out in business like just going back and trying to put my mindset into those uh, new entrepreneurs and you want to project this idea that you're very professional yeah. and uh, maybe that you have a bigger business than you do because you think that that is going to get you those bigger clients but again yeah if you're coming off as like completely fake and then if they're gonna ask you again they might just ask you like a tough question if, and if you're trying to pretend like with video production if you're trying to pretend that you're like very high end like uh, you know director or something like that and you're going into the video and they ask you a question about ISO and you don't know what it is yeah. you're gonna look stupid so yeah. yeah the whole idea of like faking it to you make to make it it's uh, it may work for some people um, it may get you into some opportunities sometimes but I think that it's going to get you into a lot of trouble and I think that it is definitely going to hurt you in terms of building those like strong honest relationships yes. that you were talking about yeah. um, if you're being a fake person uh, then you're going to basically be making friends with other fake people who are being fake it's not really you know it's not going to uh, help you out in the long run so with that long-term thinking uh, what you really need to be doing as an entrepreneur is not faking it is improving your skills improving your knowledge if you're running a Facebook ad agency you better know what is like the the latest and greatest in Facebook ads all the new releases if you're running SEO, you better know the latest and greatest uh, what like Google's algorithm is doing. So yeah, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be faking it. That is that is such a good point mm -hmm. about the <clears throat> that you may get caught out not knowing not knowing your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know what? I want to reverse that for a second. Yeah, please. Because yeah. I see a lot of again first timers really get sort of hoodwinked by the fake it till you make it smooth talkers mm -hmm. who don't actually know what they're mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. and they give them their money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you brought up Facebook and advertise. So yeah, you know, there's yeah, a lot of like yeah, digital yeah, marketers, yeah, yeah. right? And you give them their money, and and then uh, you get nothing in return. Yeah. Yeah, right? You get a little swindled. So exactly. And mm -hmm. so make sure that you are also not engaging with someone who's faking it. If you're talking to someone, you know, really don't get caught up in the smooth talking. Really get good at asking um, sort of like the real questions, the things you want to know. Um, if you don't know what questions to ask, Google it or ask somebody else. But whenever you're gonna hire someone, again, watch out for those fakers. Really, you know, get referrals from your the people that you trust, get testimonials, check out the work they've done, find out the right ask questions to ask and really ask those questions. Because I also I don't as much as I want to teach people how to network, I also want to teach first-time entrepreneurs how to stop getting hoodwinked yeah, by people true. who are not good at what they do, uh, but yeah, will happily take your, your money. You gotta spend your money wisely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? You have to look at your your money as an investment. Everything that you spend on your business, you have to look at it as an investment. Am I going to get yeah. a return on this money that I put? Very out? true. Very true. Right. Yeah. And again, if you're just gonna be faking it, you're gonna be around other fake people. Yeah. yeah, and you're gonna be 
uh, you're, you're going to be in a bad place. You're not going to be setting your business up properly and you're not going to be building real connections like me and Lindsay are building yes. today. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and really that is, I mean, that is the heart of, of networking. It's not, about, yeah. it's not about getting to as many events as you can, getting as many business cards as you can, as many LinkedIn contacts yeah. as you can. It's not about that. You know, it's about having real solid connections For with sure. people because those connections open doors. They open doors that you didn't even know existed. I think people overcomplicate it. It's it's basically making friends. It is. And you gotta like you gotta network with people who you want to hang out with. And yes. it, when you end up working with them, like you're gonna want to be working with someone yeah. who you get along with, and someone yeah. who is you know that you have a, a lot of things in common yeah. with. So yeah, I think uh, I think that we got a lot of good value out of that point. And uh, should we move on to the next one? Let's move on. All right. Yeah. So our next point is, if you're not gonna fake it, then you better be yourself. Yeah. <laughs> And so point four really is about being being authentic and being yourself and bringing your personality to the table. So I again, you know, we're both jeans and sneakers kind of people, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we're not professional, mm -hmm. right? So be yourself, be quirky, dress how you want to dress, you know, like, like use the kind of language you want to use, be who you are. Remember to be professional, right? If you're going to a place that requires a certain dress code, honor that. Yeah, you know, true. If you like to swear a lot with your friends, maybe you don't swear out, out in public mm -hmm. as much, mm -hmm. you know, like you want to still be professional you want to be on time you want to be respectful of the people around you and be gracious but but you know let your personality shine Definitely. networking like you said it's a lot like making friends or it's a lot like dating as well mm -hmm. right like if, if if we're gonna build a solid network with really great people we have to be real so they can see us mm -hmm. we want to think of it as we want to be that beacon that attracts people to us who are who are like us and resonate with us yeah, yeah. And so don't feel like you have to be overly rigid and, and you know buttoned up like really be yourself for sure i think some of that goes into like the idea of like your personal brand and stuff like that too which is uh another idea that people get like very afraid of when you bring it up like well what's your personal brand like people don't want to view themselves as a brand i guess but like as entrepreneurs and as a business owner you definitely do have a personal brand and that's essentially just like what people are going to take away from you after they meet you so like for me, like my personal brand, I hope that a lot of people think that I'm like friendly. I'd like them to think that I'm no, good. No, he's a grouch. <laughs> she's a grouch. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like people to think that I'm like uh, good with cameras and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely something that I try to project. Uh, dogs is a big part of my personal brand. Well, you've seen my logo. My logo is a hot pink chihuahua wearing his like glasses and like a bow tie. <laughs> Great logo, yeah, yeah. I can't even offer you to design one because you already have the perfect logo. I, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I think a lot of it ties into that idea and and uh, what people are going to be taking away when they meet you so I mean if you're being your authentic self that should be pretty it's actually easier it's actually oh easier gotcha. for you to do yeah and uh, and yeah what people are going to remember about you so you kind of in a way you're sort of cultivating it but and uh, you know you're presenting yourself to the world in a, in a certain way whether it's at these uh, networking events or anytime that you're <laughs> meeting people uh, professionally yeah. in life um, or even like with your social media presence what you're posting what you're suggesting to people uh, yeah. what you're like so yeah being your authentic self and really finding ways um, going back to like the structural elements of business finding ways of projecting that forward so that yeah. people like really know who you are so when people bring up Lindsay Johnson you know right away she's the radical connector mm -hmm. she uh, you know has a lot of business knowledge that she can bring um, and a lot of like expertise when it comes to networking like people are going to think about those things so uh, my advice for you guys out there um, how I can distill that down and give you some advice basically pick some things pick like four or five things that you want people to really understand about you and then make sure that that's at the forefront when you're when you're yeah. meeting people that you're bringing those yeah. things up I think you would agree with I, that. I fully that's agree that's such a great point you know what it's interesting <clears throat> so you said that when people ask you about your personal brand and I'm mm. like I, I, I don't think I've ever been asked that or asked mm. somebody else that. Mm. So that's interesting that people get asked that. Yeah. But what I loved is what you what you said when I talked about jeans and sneakers and mm. you said, well, she is the radical connector. <laughs> and that exactly paints my point. Yeah. Yeah. You are your brand. Right. And so, you know, hopefully people are getting a good feel from your brand just from that interaction mm -hmm. with you, as mm -hmm. you said. And one of the questions I, I always ask folks that I'm, I'm working with is how do you want people to feel 
after they leave an interaction with you. And if you, <clears throat> sorry, if you can really zero in on, on that, how do you want them to feel? What are a few, you know, adjectives you can throw up there? I want them to feel inspired, or mm -hmm. I want them to feel at ease, or yeah, I want I like them to that. feel fired up, yeah, you know, absolutely. whatever that yeah. is. I want them to feel accepted, I want them to feel heard. Cool, if yeah, even yourself, more than like elements of your personality, but like, uh, yeah, feelings right. that you want to yeah. take, that's, I love that, people, that yeah. the way that uh, you want people to feel after they meet, that's awesome. Well, that's the, the Maya Angelou quote, right, yeah. which I'm going to totally butcher, which is that people will forget what you said, <laughs> but people will never forget how you make them feel yeah right yeah, and, and really just thinking about that and and when you when you think about that it, it's not about again it's about not putting on a facade it's about being being mm -hmm. this this thing being who you are being your brand being yourself and then letting letting the relationships yeah, build again you. yeah that should it's not really hard to be yourself but I guess it's, it, it's it's hard it's hard to have the courage sometimes yes. to be yourself when again the the idea that we're kind of sold as entrepreneurs uh, when we were growing up is like you have to be a certain type of person if you want to have success and like I'm telling you right now you don't yeah. like there's whoever you are there's a net there's a network out there for you there's a market out for out there for you and uh, and go get it so I think that we're both starting to one run out of water here from all this talking yes. in the heat and uh, we're gonna get into point our five. final point our <laughs> final point which is I'm gonna our, tie it back I'm, into I'm super excited for okay well point. okay well I am too so we've done some touchy feely <laughs> and we're gonna head back into strategy now okay because okay. both are important great, great. Um, and so our my final point Point is that again really be, be strategic before you go to the event whatever it is and think about how you're going to answer what do you do and how you're going to build in a follow-up touch point as I'm going to expand on that now your what do you do is dynamic it is not an elevator pitch if someone talks to me one more time about this stupid 30 second elevator pitch I'm going to lose mm -hmm. my mind mm -hmm. your what do you do is dynamic because it changes based on who you're talking to, what you want them to know, what you're currently focused on and promoting. So again, if we already have an idea of where we're going, who we're looking for, what we want to, what we want to talk mm -hmm. about, what we want to say. So when you think about that, what do you do? It's going to change. So for example, if I was going to some sort of, like I'm, I'm heading to a party on Thursday uh, for, for women, women entrepreneurs here in Toronto. And when I go to that, when people ask me what I do, I'm going to say, well, I teach first time entrepreneurs how to build a business. That's what I'm going to say that I do, right? I love it. Yeah. But if I was going to something where, say, I was going to check out a new community, and it was a community I wanted to get in and be, be one of their expert speakers, well, I might say something like, uh, well, I, I do workshops and, and public speaking topics on how to build a business, everything from sales to networking to community building. Right? So the what do you do changes. It's not it, it's not yeah. static. So think about that beforehand and practice. I hope you guys are paying attention because she's dropping some serious yes. value. I have a whole I have a whole <laughs> like course I do on how to answer what do you do effectively and start conversations. Because yeah. again, I'll tell you this, this is okay. Your what do you do? It's not an answer. People aren't asking you that because they want an answer. Yeah. It is a conversation starter. Yeah, yeah. they're also kind of asking how are you gonna help me? Like, not necessarily. Yeah. Not, we can't have that assumption because then what happens is we get into a sales mode oh, okay. and that's when we get into the pitch. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be pitched. Okay. Yeah, we're not it's a pitch. conversation yeah. starter. All right. So you have to think about that. And then when I talk about the follow up touch point, it's like, how are you going to build in this opportunity to follow up? What do you want that next step to be after this initial conversation? Again, if I, if I'm at something where I'm looking for, I call them PPC, your perfect potential client. And I'm probably going to direct them to my business community on Facebook. So I already know that I'm going to talk about that at some point mm -hmm. if, Absolutely. if yeah. it's a right fit with the conversation. Yeah. So that when I leave and I send an email, I could be, it was great meeting you. Here's the link to that community. Come join us. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I was talking to somebody about being a speaker, I might say, okay, well, you know what, when I get home, I'll send you a description of my topics and we can see if it's a right fit. And then I'll go home and thank you very much. Here's my topics. Let's book a call to talk about this. Yeah. So thinking ahead of time, again, it's all about being strategic mm -hmm. ahead of time, how you're going to have that, that call to action within the conversation that you then follow up with them on. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely going into like uh, strategies, mm -hmm. tactics. Um, these things that ha when we're going to go into that interaction, it may seem like the people who are experts uh, at networking events and just expert networkers that you're like, oh, they're a natural, they're a natural, they're not a natural. They've prepped things, right? They've prepped, they've said, if someone asks me this question, what am I going to say? And like, I can definitely, when you're saying like having, uh, when people ask like, what do you do and having that be like an adaptable thing, yeah. that is super important. Uh, I can definitely say that it, it depends on uh, the audience that you're talking to. I, with my business, I offer like so many different service, graphic design, video editing, mm -hmm. websites, if I'm talking 
to uh, a room full of people that need websites, guess what? I'm the guy that does websites. Exactly. That's right. right. You're zeroing on the one thing, Absolutely. not, not yeah. sort of like fire hosing them with all of yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. If you're in a room full of real estate agents, I'm a real estate photographer. Yeah. I don't have to talk about any of the other yeah. stuff. All right. So yeah. Yeah. So exactly. I really, I really love that. And uh, yeah. And I love the idea of being tactical and uh, really like prepping, uh, prepping yourself when you're going into events or just like, yeah, like, and the other point that you would bring up is fantastic as well, that like you, networking does not happen exclusively at networking events. You don't have to be yeah. at a networking event. You can do all your networking even outside of those. It's good to go to them. And uh, a lot of time people there are a little bit more open to talking to you, but yeah. Yeah, because yeah, at networking events, people are there to network. So it's easier mm -hmm. to talk about what you do. But at other types of events, people are usually more open to make friends and connections. Sure. So it's a Absolutely. different kind of style. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you, I have found so many clients on the bus at Starbucks, like in lineups for things. Totally. It's yep. just about yep. understanding that networking is literally happening all mm -hmm. around. If there's <laughs> another person in the room, either you know them or you don't know them. It's the same thing. If there's yeah. another person there, it's an opportunity to expand your network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, as entrepreneurs uh, starting out or people who are trying to improve their business, that's something that you're definitely going to get used to and something that you're definitely going to get to love because we're saying that if you're uh, being your authentic self, if you're going to events and spaces, um, which is where we're actually shooting this video, not Love Child as I said earlier. Projects, project spaces, <laughs> project because spaces. there was no room for us at Love Child. <laughs> Yeah, neither place has air conditioning. No, so both of us were. It doesn't. Yeah. But yeah, if you're if you're being yourself and you're going to events that you like and you're hanging out with people that you like and that you have things in common with, I don't know why that isn't going to be a good time. Yeah. And yes, it is also going to greatly increase your business. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're going to be working with, doing projects with, whatever it is, people who you get along with and people that you like. So yeah, I guess like um, kind of what I want to say about like networking to sum it up. From my side, and I'll let Lindsay give you guys a bit of sum up. But networking is fun, and it's great for your business. Yeah, I love it. Networking is fun; it's great for your business. Don't forget a system and a strategy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, and don't forget a system and a strategy. So, can we just get? I know this is always the hardest part. Can we get uh, a roundup of the five points? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. So the first one is be strategic with where you're going, and think about why you're going, love it. who you're looking for, and where are they? Go there. Awesome. The next one is. Um, Told you this was the hard part. No, no, I got it, I got it. The <laughs> next one was choose places that you like. So love if it, you feel it. like you don't fit in or it's not a community you enjoy or an event you enjoy, don't go. Go to the things you like love going it. to. The next one is stop faking it till you make it. It doesn't work, everyone knows. And as Jared pointed out, mm -hmm. you could get yourself in hot water. Mm -hmm. Drop mm -hmm. that wall and connect authentically. Be yourself. Be professional, but bring yourself to the table so people can get to know you, like you, and trust you. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is be strategic before you go. Think about what you're gonna say that you do and how you're gonna start a conversation. And think about where you're gonna direct that person within the conversation, if appropriate, um, whether you're directing them to your community, to your website, you're gonna send them a link for a call with you, whatever that is, think about that before, beforehand so that when you go, you're able to have a great conversation and already know where you're going and you don't start breaking down the cold sweat while you're talking to them and stop listening to them because you're trying to think about what's next <laughs> yes definitely so yeah that's all all amazing advice yeah. and uh, and I'm I honestly learned uh, a lot just from this experience and from making this video and I hope that you guys learned a lot too uh, Lindsay where can people find you on uh, online and in real life okay so you can find me on all the socials well except for I'm not really active on Twitter at radical Linz. Uh, radical Linz, you'll find me there uh, most importantly if you are an entrepreneur come join our rad connectors community on yeah, Facebook. Awesome. Yeah, Facebook. It is group. it is all about supporting the entrepreneurial journey inside and out. Beautiful. So we do both skill development and also deal with all the stuff that comes up as a new entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Great. Plus you're going to get to network with a lot of people. Good. All right. Well, go to all those places and uh, yeah, definitely join the Facebook group. That's a that's a huge thing. If you yeah. if nothing else, definitely go out and uh, and join the Radical Connectors Facebook awesome. group. Yeah, Rad Connectors. Rad Connectors yeah. Facebook group. Yeah, search that up. Uh, we'll even have a link for that down in the description for sure. Uh, as for my side, you guys probably know where to find me. You can find me skateboarding and walking dogs all over downtown Toronto and running around with video camera making vlogs. 
and skateboarding and stuff like that. Um, you can find me a lot of networking events. I honestly yeah. do go to quite a few. Uh, if you don't like to leave your house, you can find me online at galaxydesigngraphics.com, uh, on Facebook and all that social media stuff, uh, Galaxy Design TO. Honestly, Lindsay, thank you so much. So much. Uh, this has been an amazing experience, amazing video. I hope amazing content. I hope that you guys learned a lot and uh, you're gonna be less afraid of uh, being your authentic selves and getting out there to those uh, great uh, networking events and those great networking opportunities. I so love it. Thank amazing. You. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye and guys. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, and we'll see you later.